Hey YouTube, this is Prometheus guys, giving you more than the meta. So I want to show you once again uh, where I got stuck uh, with the Texans playbook. Um, I didn't go into this particular gameplay with uh, basically any kind of a offensive scheme um, in particular. So I had to dig deep into schemes I built last year in particular using uh, the Green Bay Packers. There are some similarities of this. Uh, this is the second game running with the Texans playbook online. Um, and I just, you know, I literally was checking to make sure that, that the playbooks weren't correct. Uh, so uh, if you guys like, the, like these breakdowns, uh, I really would appreciate your support on that. Uh, in particular, you know, uh, basically most of the people that watch my videos, uh, a good 60% of them are not subscribed. So if you like these breakdowns, make sure, sure you hit the subscribe button. But let's go ahead and jump into this video. I just want to show you um, that I literally have my playbook set up for spread. Um, and then I think uh, for some particular reason, Washington was, was selected. I, I actually went ahead and I was making some changes. I've got Tennessee uh, spread as my playbook, uh, but this, but I, I guess with this new update patch or whatever in the system, uh, it's defaulting the team playbooks. Uh, and you can see this is not the spread playbook. Um, I know this, I run spread, uh, spread primarily, and I've got a bunch of I form strong, um, just, you know, you know, spread basically has pistol and gun and that's it. So, um, these are not my formations and I just had to jump back into the scheme and, and try to build off of what I learned already. Uh, I am a big uh, normal gun normals, gun doorbells type person, uh, but this is a, a formation that I have no schemes over, but I did use, uh, in the previous gameplay, the tight Y off. So I did have some of my audibles already set up. Uh, this guy would basically come out um, as one of his adjustments. He would bunch up his lines, uh, basically make it very difficult for me to do the run. So uh, the, the trap play would actually get kind of bottled up. So he presses his guys down. And then uh, uh, basically what I do is I, I streak this guy up. And my job is to actually take this whip route and put this guy into uh, basically a flood concept. So I set this up accordingly. Uh, and I'm um, really looking for either the corner or, or, or the, the drag. I'm going to always take the drag in man situations just because it's something that, uh, you know, is always going to be a little bit of a higher percentage pass uh, and a less, less defenders in the area. So he was showing me zone coverages, and I decided to go ahead and come out of basically um, a slip screen. This is something I typically don't do. He was actually carrying, I, I'd throw the little slip strip screen off to the, off to the right, and actually get a first down off that. That's going to be the first and only time that I use a screen uh, against this guy, but it's, it's something that I don't normally have in my schemes. It's not something I run on, on a regular basis. So right here, I jump into the other play that I like to have in the scheme is, is this bench hammer. And really what I like to do with this is I like to streak this guy up as a clear out, and I like to take this, this guy right here and put him on a drag route. And my alert is going to be basically the clear out the streak route. And then I'm going to look low as my number two. And the guy over the top is going to be my number three. This route right here, this corner route, I really look to it unless it's some type of man coverage. It's just essentially it's just a, it's a clear out for me. And I don't look at the bench concept off to the right. So I'm going to streak these guys up right here. And you can see that this, this defender right here is kind of playing. I can't throw that streak, um, but I, I decided to drop it down, and I just missed through the ball. Uh, so it was just a bad pass right there. So now he's actually in dollar. You see his guys out right here. He's got uh, people kind of bunched up. Either dollar or this is basically 34 uh, defense. So right here I go ahead and jump into uh, a different variation of this, and he spreads his guys out. He was actually getting, with, with, this, with his defensive setup, he was actually getting this guy in, and he was dropping this guy into coverage, this guy into coverage, this guy into coverage, and he was bringing the house um, with the setup. So it was really, really aggressive blitz. He was sending five, and he's usually getting some per person in. So here's a little setup that I have with this, with this uh, one play right here. Um, the play initially is set up like so. You got kind of a post route, you got the flat route, and you got a table route. But what I like to do is I like to take this guy, put him on a flat, and streak this guy up. And the reason I do that is that sometimes these defenders will float up, and I'll pop that for a five or six yard gainer. If the guy comes down, 
that if the guy comes down to the flat, then I can hit this little angle route by the tight end, uh, by the running back on, on the back side because it's got a, like a unique route. Problem is I haven't thrown this in a long time, so my timing was off, and I actually threw the ball early. As a result, you can see the play actually uh, just expanded. So uh, you'll see me come back to that route again where I actually hit it, uh, but uh, he's actually just trying to hit me with really aggressive cover three blitz. Now I switch things up a little bit with my anticipation that these this guy's going to get a hat, hat, double team, and I should be able to go ahead and get uh, a nice little running lane, running lane right there. Uh, but I think what happens is the backside defender actually goes right past my, my guard. Okay, actually, no, he does get picked up. And you can see actually go ahead and pick some pretty good yards up there. So I'll probably come back to that play once again. Now he bunches up his line. Um, it looks like he's got a really aggressive blitz going on. Uh, and I'm going to run. This is a play that I actually use against this guy a lot because he was sending his, his inside linebackers at me uh, and leaving the middle of the field open uh, for that whip route by Collins. So... I think what I did is I chose to keep that whip route. You can see the whip route was available. The defenders actually get pulled off by that corner. And I was able to just go ahead and pick up a big chunk of yards uh, with this tight end corner out uh, play. There's a, you know, you could run this many different variations of making this play really, really effective. But this play is, is good because of that inside whip. And he was running a lot of cover three blitzes with me. Uh, so he just kept the middle of the field wide open. Right here, I do an off tackle. Uh, Hargrave uh, almost tackled me behind the line of scrimmage. I try to cut it back up, uh, and I probably could have picked up a few more yards. But you know, anytime you can do an inside zone and pick up you know five plus yards, you're always winning in this game. Now he spreads his line out, covers over here, so the pressure's coming in. I think this guy drops back in the zone. He's got rotating coverage um, over here, I think, and then uh, he's blitzing these guys off. And he's using this guy right here is actually the guy that he's using. So um, I do an inside tackle or inside zone. And you can see these guys get picked up. But this guy comes in free. Uh, and uh, his defensive guy is just basically clear. So that basically kind of shut me down. This is the defense he really ran a lot was his cover three match. And he was, he was sending basically his inside linebackers. Uh, sending five guys with coverage, so it was a pretty unique defense that he was using. So setting this up once again, um, I'm assuming this guy is going to fall back in the zone. This guy's going to fall back. He's got his thirds. This guy will come down and play the flat, and he's using right over here in the middle of the field. So uh, setting this back up, I'm going to go ahead and do this to your play right here. Really what I should be looking for is this route right here. I'm, I, I think that I, I wasn't reading this correctly. I should be throwing this ball. So you can see this is open right here, and that's why I have this, this place set up. I've got the streak over the top, and then I've got this little angle route. So all three routes are available. I think I just threw right over his user because the one defender actually pulled into the middle of the field, and he was out of position, and I was able to go ahead and get the ball into the end zone and go up um, by seven points. So score is 7-3. Uh, I've got three minutes left, and I want to go ahead and chew the clock in this guy not give him any time whatsoever. So I'm going to go once again into the tight Y off. And the place, base play I started calling is because uh, he was having a hard time stopping. It was just this tight end corner because he was blitzing his inside linebackers with that cover three match type coverage. So he was just trying to wait, wait for me to make a mistake. But I believe these guys are coming in. He's mugging with this guy. You got essentially a third concept. This guy should be coming down. This is a third. So... Really, the weakness is where his user's at, and it really is the middle of the field, um, and off to the right is the weakness of, the, of this defense. And this is, uh, I was still catching him in the wrong defense at this. So I do an off-tackle run with the anticipation that uh, I'm going to be able to basically get a blocker on all these guys, and I'll be able to run, uh, but I think this guy's just shot in the gap, did completely whiffed in the block. And you can see uh, they basically come down and block, and I don't, I, you know, the blocking just really is not great. I should have went to the outside. I just, I like to run inside the tackles. It's just my preference. I'm not someone who does outside stretch plays. So I'm always looking to try to get a good block on the inside uh, and just try to run between the tackles. So he's back at it again, showing me the same defense. I'm going to go ahead and set this up, this hammer concept, where it's just the levels over. And I've got basically a corner. And really, I'm looking for the one or the two uh, with, with this concept. So let's go ahead and set this up, show you the reads, streak up, 
the inside defender or uh, uh, inside tight end. So now he has to carry with this guy because this guy's going to fall back. I can pop that guy right over the middle, but I'm looking for the levels on the back side. He carries. I'm just going to drop it down underneath, and you can see because he pulled himself out of position and be able to get an easy first down. So this guy would stay in this defense. He didn't want to get out of the defense. He didn't want to go ahead and do any kind of hybrid coverages. He just wanted to keep blitzing me on a regular basis. Inside zone, um, able to go ahead and pick up, you know, five, four yards. That's fine. You can you can win with four yards. Back at it again. I think I go with uh, this particular concept. Uh, so this is how I like to set it up. I do this because this is my fast read. I should be reading that. Really what I'm looking to do is try to open this play up, this route right up here, and I've got the streak route uh, to preoccupy this guy. So setting this up once again, and right, you can see the running back is wide open. I, fro I just waited just a little bit more. You can see I actually get a nice little uh, tackle right there, and, and a broken tackle, and then basically get the ball down there. So that was the yardage I was looking for. I think that was probably the fourth or fifth time since I got stuck in the Houston playbook that I've tried to hit that play and I finally hit it successfully um, to uh, basically get that route. It's just, it was just waiting for the route a little bit. And here's my inside whip. Uh, he has to chase that tight end. That's his responsibility. As a result, I could just keep hitting him with this inside whip. Uh, so he wants to keep blitzing me. He wants to keep sending the dogs after me. But uh, my guys are essentially just, you know, carving him up. He doesn't have anywhere to go with it. Now I jump into another inside zone play with my hope that this will, this guy will block, this guy will block, and this guy will pick it up, and I should be able to get a fairly good run. Uh, switch things out a little bit. You just make a little a switch to the outside. Uh, the blocking's right there, but um, I don't know where I was going. I think I saw the green box on this side, and I figured that it had better blocking. You could see the hole was available for me to pick up at least four or five yards, and I just missed the hole. That was just a bad run. Uh, he does burn a timeout, so he's trying to preserve clock right now. So this guy understands clock management. He understands I'm in field goal range, um, and he wants to give himself one more shot on offense. I hit him with the whip once again. Get the ball down here. He takes another timeout. Smart clock management. You know, save yourself some time. Um, I'm inside first and goal, and I start thinking, okay, let's let's start working the clock down a little bit, and then I discover I've got an inside um, dive play off of this this uh, tight uh, single back formation. So I'm just going to hit this guy with uh, inside dives, which get a little bit better blocking as a result. Uh, I go uh, off the right of the center, and I'm able to go ahead and, and pick up, and I am actually took all of his time out. So I wanted to be in a situation where I didn't give this guy any kind of leverage uh, as far as time management uh, with a minute left. And now I'm just going to go ahead and try to chew the clock down, but also I want to try to avoid meaning a fourth down situation. So if I do plug the ball into the end zone, that's fine. Uh, I just want to make sure that uh, I, I don't leave any timeout, so I don't give him any kind of opportunities with that. He ends up turning the ball over to me. So I've got 20 sef uh, 27 seconds left, three timeouts I'm at the 50-yard line. So he just he, this guy would never get out of this, this, uh, this blitzing defense, this cover three shells. So once again, I'm going to set this up. Really, the first read is this. You should be looking for this. If this guy falls back, you take this. This is your this is your area that you want to take with this. But I was trying to sneak this play in because you get really good, you know, you get a lot of yardage on it. And uh, the defender actually comes down and plays matches on this. So um, I'm looking for this corner out. I think the tight end was, was he, he bumps the tight end. And um, this is pretty much locked up. Uh, this is a bad throw, but I still threw the ball uh, to the crossing route right of the backside. So um, he had that play locked up. <clears throat> it was just a simple man uh, coverage. Uh, and I think there was outside leverage. And that basically locked that play up. So I really can't go back to that again. So I think what I did is I stayed with this inside whip play. Just quick snapped it. Inside whip uh, was covered. He's got to cover this. I probably could have thrown this particular ball, but I, anytime I see a user, there's no reason for me to tempt that. So I'm just going to go and check it down to the inside whip where the defender actually came down. I think he might have sent his, um, his uh, zone defender at me uh, as a spy, and that's why I was able to throw that. So I was able to go and pick up a good chunk of yards, and now I'm, I'm in field goal range. I don't feel really confident with my field goal options uh, because of uh, basically – the way the new field goal option sets, like it's a little bit, you've got to concentrate a little bit more with field goals. So I'm just going to set up the hammer concept once again. 
Uh, and uh, he actually covers it up. And I think I hit the guy over the top of him because he actually played down in the flat. And I get basically one shot in the end zone. And there was a problem when you're playing with an offense that you're not really familiar with. Uh, you don't really have any kind of um, scheme to get the ball in the end zone. My job was to basically put this guy into into a uh, drag route to have a concept like so, but I didn't set it up correctly. And I've also got an arches concept where I've got basically you know this um, drag and angle route. Um, I snapped the ball a little bit too early, and as a result, um, I froze, didn't have a place to go with the ball, and I got myself um, a sack there. But that's all right. I'm going to take a timeout, take my three points, and settle with that against my opponent. Uh, he ends up getting getting the game, getting back into the game. He gets a, a, a touchdown on a on a on a lob streak. Gets me my division, uh, my uh, defense out of positioning. You can see the game. Uh, this is a previous posting that he did. So right here, um, what I'm thinking right now is I want to go ahead and run the ball against him. I want to try to chew some of the clock up, uh, and I find this formation. This is probably the biggest no-no that you can do when you play online. Is that if you're not familiar with plays, um, you don't want to go ahead and ad lib and play and use plays that you're not familiar with. And this is a play action. I've got basically a, you know a concept where these guys are going to pull defenders out, and this is really just an easy one, two concept. You know, looking for the drag route. But the problem is that this guy was actually sending a very heavy a blitz against me, uh, and it, because of it, his pressure was getting in, and uh, I had play action. And uh, as a result, I was getting sacked on there. So second and 16, it was just not a good situation. I jumped into a play I wasn't familiar with. Didn't know how the animation was going to work. So uh, he basically got rewarded for the really aggressive de defense he was playing. So I'm going to just jump back into plays I'm familiar with. Um, I've got uh, basically this, this route right here, and he just was not bottling up this inside whip. So I'm picking up 13 yards every single time I run this play back at it again i'm just going to know huddle this guy keep him the same defense and here's the whip didn't do anything with it didn't do hard flat the adjustment for that is to do a hard flat to get a defender out there uh and he just wasn't stopping that whip rod he actually went into cover six so he did try to debate me into into a bad decision right here um i didn't like this guy falling out this was open i had leverage uh, but once again i'm experimenting with plays that i shouldn't be doing as a result, that pressure comes off the edge. So if I didn't know where to go with the ball, I was actually kind of in a bind. So I'm going to go ahead and stay with the hammer concept, streak, streak the guy up, do a drag route right here. Um, should have another play building off of this, this particular play because I just kept going back to this on a regular basis. But you can see he get himself out of position. I'm going to go ahead and hit that tight end. It's my alert play. And I just aggressive catch it right in front of the safety and took the yard. So... Uh, he's got to be conscious of that. He's got to be conscious of those other, uh, you know, those other routes. So nice little inside, uh, you know, the play. These guys should all get hats on hats. And as a result, I should be able to go ahead and just do an inside zone run. Right here, you can see that the blocking is phenomenal. I pick up like, you know, 14 yards or so. And right now I'm just thinking, okay, I just need to chew this clock up. That's the most important thing is just chewing up this clock. Uh, and not giving this guy any kind of like you know uh, opportunity to to move the ball. Even if I settle for three, you know three points, I'm cool with uh, cool with it. I want to get this ball, get you know chew down, get down to about two minutes uh, in the in the game, go up by two possessions and put him in a situation where he's got to score twice. Another inside zone um, right there with the draw play. He's staying in this odd defense, this cover three defense. So, I, I, you know, I'm waiting for this guy to make any kind of lab adjustments, but he really isn't. And this play just was destroying him for the most part. I actually try to throw the, throw the ball off. Um, he actually got some really aggressive pressure in there. Uh, but that was the play that I just kept going back to for, against this cover three match. Right here, I go ahead and jump into this play right here. And let's see if we set this up correctly. So, Really, my first read should be this route, and then I'm looking for the running back route as my next play. Um, with the length of the field on the other side, I should probably go to the other side, but I actually hit the tight end over the middle of the field and actually get a nice little completion. So um, that was just another area that he had a hard time stopping, and I really was not... You could see I'm really focusing pretty much like this side of the field. I'm not even looking over here for the most part because he just kept blitzing his guys where he just didn't he didn't have one of you over there so that's why i just kept just using these plays so 
back at it again using the same poten potential concept and I'm assuming he's going to chase after that tight end. So what I did is I switched things up. I took the tight end and put him on a drag route with the anticipation he's probably going to carry up and then get lost and I should be able to hit this tight end on the back side because he, I haven't thrown that way the entire time. So it's just kind of switching up uh, the, 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 the way the thing works and there was a little rub concept right there and I just picked up four yards. That's all right. Really what my goal is just to chew the clock down as much as possible. I want to get to, to basically two minutes. So he's got his line spread out. He's got a single tackle. He's got his linebacker. So my, my guys are going to get on through their blocks because there's there's no leverage issues whatsoever. So I just go ahead and jump into uh, this play. I flip it to the opposite side. He gets blocked out, and I'm able to go ahead and get the ball down for a first down. And you can see I'm just chewing the clock down as much as possible. And now I'm actually going to go work the clock down. I want to get to the two-minute warning against this guy, just chewing the clock down as much as possible. I don't want to give him any kind of life whatsoever. And right here, uh, I think what he does is start taking timeouts because he wants to preserve time. But I'm still, I'm in a driver's seat. I'm going to go ahead and chew the clock down on this guy. I'm winning this game. I'm going to go ahead and take my victory against this guy because he did make <clears throat> a mistake. And as a result, um, I'm going to go ahead and get the ball in the end zone. Get the ball down to the one-yard line. He burns his, his second timeout. He's got one left. <clears throat> do basically inside zone. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take Collins and uh, flip this, uh, flip the guy. I'm going to slide him over so I've got an extra blocker on the inside because he's not blocking anybody right now. He's irrelevant. Snap the ball. I got an extra blocker. I'm able to go ahead and get the ball into the end zone, going up by uh, basically two possessions. Uh, this guy ended up uh, rage quitting out, but once again, guys, thanks for your support. I really appreciate it. If you want to see my ebooks and what I run, I do have this scheme broken down on my Patreon. Uh, so uh, feel free to go and check that out. Thank you for your support, guys. Until next time.